Look who we got here. Somebody that we haven't seen in about 20 years is Hello the there. Late How and are great, you? late and great. Good to see you. George Humphrey. Yes. Tell oh my goodness. <laughs> I see who it is. Yes. <laughs> Tell us what you've been up to. Oh my God, goodness, isn't this a great day? Yes. It's amazing. Tell us why you're here, Harry, because it's my Facebook. My heart is heavy for the world, but my heart is also happy for the good people here. We need to get back to work, and we need to realize that the cure, this cure, it's not a cure, it's not about a virus, it's about political control. And we are free and sovereign, and we have the choice to, to be either be slaves or to be free. I choose to be free. Yes. Well, guess what I did? I bought about $20,000 worth of editing equipment and hired some people to put all the tapes on for the last 25 years, and you're on there. So I want you to, and I got, I'm going to plug my YouTube channel. Okay, great, great. Mike great. Hansen of course, Archives. Of course. Hansen Archives and Waco Archives. I, I didn't recognize you at the start. Okay, so I need you to say, this is George Humphrey, and I love Mike Hansen Archives. This is George Humphrey, and this guy is awesome. Mike Hansen, the Mike Hansen Archives. Check it out. You're on there. We just put about three tapes of you on there. And you had slick black hair then. <laughs> now, right. it's, now it's all dyed. <laughs> all right. God bless y'all. We'll see okay. you in a minute. Hello, Austin, Texas, and we are back. Now, just briefly here before we get to our guest. We have a hot show for you today. Oh. <laughs> in 1990, I was one of the first ones to come out in Austin, Texas publicly against Desert Fraud. I mean, Storm. Desert Storm. Fraud. <laughs> Storm Fraud. Now, with us today, we have two illustrious guests. One is a former KVET radio host who's got a new job on the radio, and she's a dear friend of ours, Joyce Isaacs, and also in the studio, one of the leaders, if not the leader, and fighting for um, the Gulf War uh, illness uh, uh, business, Miss Joyce Riley. A true hero and patriot. She really is. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, I want to just open it up then. Um, which one of y'all wants to go first? Well, let Joyce. She's, go ahead, Joyce. She's a, an Army officer or Air Force Air, and a nurse. Houston, right? Air Force, That's correct. Yeah. Yes, I'm from Houston. I want to say that I had the pleasure of being here in Austin because of some... Gulf War veterans and some very concerned people here uh, wanted to have a meeting to show the evidence because, you know, we've been talking about this on the radio for a long time. In fact, Carl's Wiggle Wigglesworth show was kind enough to have us on the air the other day also, and Keith Perry on his microbroadcasting station. And I want to say that I don't want anyone to believe me just because I say this. Don't believe me just because you're hearing it on the radio or you see something on TV because that's the problem we're into right now with the Pentagon and the information they're putting out. So we came to Austin to put on the information, to show the evidence, which we did last night at the American Legion. And by doing that, we showed evidence of whether or not this, this Gulf War illness is real. Is it as serious as, as everybody says? And has the U.S. government known this information since 1991 and failed to tell the American public? So we left it open for the public to see. We left it open for the public to decide in their own minds, is this true or not? Because if people understand what is happening right now, if I am correct in what I am saying, that means we have a Pentagon right now that has lied to the American people, lied to our military, allowed them to get sick, allowed them to, to die, and allowed them to transfer this disease to other people. Well, now, wait a minute, Joyce. It's easy to believe you because you were there, weren't you? Well, I wasn't in the theater of operations, and this is why this is part of my story. I did okay. not go to Desert Storm. Uh, How did you, I but served. You found out about you were the, one of the pioneers that found out about. This. Oh, I got sick. That'll that'll, that'll teach you real quick. You got a problem. Really quick. That's yeah. right. And what happened was, as a flight nurse in the Air Force Reserve, I volunteered to go back at Kelly Air Force Base in the 32nd AES to participate in Operation Desert Storm. I was supposed to go to Saudi Arabia the week of the ceasefire, so I did not go. But as a result of that, uh, what I did at that point was I made sure I that. I interrupt you just a minute, Joy. Yeah, uh, either that or we just put up a slate for a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt. You. I'm sorry to interrupt you all like this. We're gonna we're, we're our, our wide shot here is cutting Joyce.
Okay, by I the think way, your audience probably there we go. That's bad. That's bad. Magic of TV. Uh -huh. yeah. I think your audience probably understands. Live that. television. And so, what I did was, as a flight nurse, and volunteered to go back to Desert Storm was I volunteered to go to Kelly Air Force Base. I did not go to the theater of operations because of the um, ceasefire, but I did fly around in a C-130 from Alaska to Cuba doing missions and trying to serve my country. And I want to say that to every veteran out there and to every person listening to this program, you joined the military for the right reasons. And I am a very pro-America uh, person, pro-military, uh, I am not anti-American, I am not anti-military, and I want that clearly understood here. That I support this form of government, and I would have died for it, and I still would die for it. Um, but we have now a credibility problem with our Pentagon that is more serious than anything that I can imagine. And the allegations that I am making against the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, the CIA, and the Veterans Administration is more serious than anything that anyone is saying anywhere in this country. What exactly is it, uh, just for people who haven't heard your, what exactly is it that you're, you, you kind of stumbled onto this? Uh... Well, I became ill. I have served as a flight nurse from January to July, July of 1991. From July to December, I became ill and was hospitalized in December of 1991 at St. Luke's Hospital in Houston. And as a result of that, I was diagnosed with some type of unknown central nervous system disorder, similar to multiple sclerosis which many, many Gulf War veterans have. This is not just me. me many Gulf War veterans have MS. So I was diagnosed with this, and it took me over the next year to get better, and finally I started to recuperate, and I'm okay today. But I was treated early on, and the whole entire reason that I am doing what I am doing is because there are those that are dying right now. There are family members that are sick as a result of this disease, and I want it stopped. I want the Pentagon to come forward with the truth, I want the American people to understand there is a Gulf War illness. But There's Joyce, a Gulf that's War the illness most frightening that's real. thing. You never were in the Gulf War theater, you say. That's right. But you got it from somewhere. Yes. And other family members of veterans have gotten it. I'm, this makes me cold when I think of you know, cause it. Because it's just, uh, is it airborne? I mean, you know what? Do, well, you, do we have any idea? Okay, let me give this part as my opinion, and very little of what I say is opinion because I use evidence, I use documents to prove what I'm saying. So that the people listening will not think that this is just my opinion, let me preface it by okay. saying, first of all, I'm not a physician and I'm not giving medical advice tonight. This is based on documents. Everything that I say to you is based on documents unless I tell you differently. Now, this is my opinion. I believe 75% of the illness that Gulf War veterans are experiencing is due to the vaccinations that we received vaccinations that our own country gave us that were experimental, that were not necessarily to protect us during wartime, that had, had ulterior motives. 25% of the disease, I believe, is due to biological, chemical, and nuclear exposures. Now, we have people that obviously suffered from chemical exposures at Camasilla and many other uh, areas that were detonated over there. We know there were nuclear plants that were blown up in Iraq. We know that there were chemical and biological munitions areas that were blown up. And we know that the exposure from that has affected our troops. Now, my concern though, and I want to separate right now biological from chemical. Chemical may be sarin gas or tabin gas. Uh, chemical may be oil well fires, exposure to oil well fires, environmental exposures. Um, but the concern I have is not those three because you don't bring home an oil well fire problem after the it's war just, and give it right, to your family. Right. Biological is a whole different arena, and biological is the exposure to viral, uh, rickettsial, bacteriological, or fungal agents that can be spread to other people. So we know that our troops were somehow exposed to a biological agent. Now, did our country do it? Did Iraq do it? I don't know that we're going to know the full answer to that. But I know that I was nowhere over there. Near, right. Okay. And your point is well made. So right after the war, when I became so ill with a disease that they said they'd never seen before and symptoms they'd never seen before, I wanted to know where it came from. And I called Veterans Administration. I called the DOD. And, of course, my response from them was, there's nothing wrong with you. Nobody's sick. Everybody's fine. Thank you very much. Don't bother to call us back. Uh -huh. That's when I knew we had a problem because, you know, epidemiologically, if a nurse calls you, and by the way, I've been a nurse for 25 years. 
And let me just establish who I am and what I've done before this. I just didn't come out from under a rock in 1993 and start yelling conspiracy, uh, Gulf War. I have been a director of nursing for um, two hospitals in San Antonio for a long-term care facility. I've taught nursing courses. Um, I've lectured. I've done a lot of things in the nursing arena for 25 years. I was the most naive person. Um, I mean, I knew there were uh, these two houses uh, in Washington, one was called Congress and one was called the Senate, but other than that, I knew very little, literally. I was not but involved in anything. I don't know if you were naive or you like a, a lot of us, uh, you were trusting. Yes, yes. Maybe that's a better word. Because oh, was you're I? You're sitting next to a veteran. How long were you in the, in the Air Force? Uh, 13 years. See? United States Air Force. Mm -hmm. yeah. 13 years, mm -hmm. wow. And I actually, see, I, I made this, uh, we'll get into maybe a little bit of this later, Joyce, but I, I I, I, I kind of disagree with your initial statement that uh, one of your statements. That, see, I, I completely distrust this government. I think that m most of these wars now are, to the, are nothing more than international bankers just fattening their wallets. All right, but did you know that 13 years ago when you joined the no, military? No, I was no, I didn't. Damn. That's what I'm talking right, about. Right. Yeah, but but you, I mean, it has to come to a realization that that, we're, that we were duped. It, it, when that's we were right. There. Right. And if you'd been talking to me like this or saying these things. Um, in 1989, I would have said, uh, get uh -huh. away from me. He's just, I don't want he's to talk a crazy. To you. That's yeah. right. Because I was the most pro-military person. My father was in the uh, Army Air Corps. My mother was in the Navy. Um, my father out, uh, my, my mother outranked my, my father, so I always say that I came That's from a right. uh, <laughs> dysfunctional family. That's great. military family. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, and, and you know, when I say this, to let people know, I am not anti-military. I loved it. I mean, going up in a C-130 was the greatest source of satisfaction in, in, in being a flight nurse that I could have imagined. But Joyce, if you didn't love this country and you didn't love the military, then you wouldn't have to be doing what you're doing. You that's do right. love this country, and that's why you've got to stand up and, and because something is terribly wrong. That's right. Not only that, we uh, four, three times I raised my hand uh, to, to, uh, in a vow to to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. And I can honestly say, Joyce, I have maintained that vow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right, you have. And you know, I never understood what domestic enemies even meant when I took yeah. that. I never understood. In fact, uh, with George Bush in 1987, I believe it was, I invited him to come to Houston, sign an organ donor card, and be involved with a, a big PR for organ transplantation, because I was a national organ donor nurse at that time. And I met George Bush and Barbara Bush, greatest people in the world, I thought, and I had no idea I was getting ready to be poisoned by my country. I had no idea what these people represented. And so as a result of that, and like we were talking about, how did I figure out what was going on with me, what did I have in, in, that was correlating with what the other Gulf War veterans had. The only two things we had in common was we received the same vaccinations and I had exposure to the troops. And that, those are the two, two variables right there. That's that was right. it. That's that was right. Your, that was your... Uh, so that's all I had to begin with. So I said, I know something happened to me during the Gulf War. I know it. I'm sick. I have this inability to use my legs that was transient. It would come and go. I was trying to work as a heart transplant nurse in Houston at the time. It was very taxing. Um, I worked 16 hour shifts. I was not afraid of work. I could work with anyone, um, you know, work with the best of them. And so for them to tell me that, oh, you just don't want to work any longer or something, was, there was no, nothing to that. When you have a passion for your profession. Sure. But this was a physical thing. And that's the problem we've got right now is because Gulf War veterans are being labeled as having this mental disorder now if they come forward and say they've got Gulf War illness. Oh, is that the latest strategy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the intimidation is incredible what they are doing. So if you're a Gulf War veteran and you go to the VA hospital, I don't care if you're hemorrhaging, I don't care what's wrong with you, the first thing the VA, off the VA facility does is give you a psychological evaluation if you're a Gulf War veteran. And from two to 12 hours worth of testing. Then they will pin some type of uh, PTSD disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, some type of um, diagnosis that can be related to a psychological disease. So that then they can say, oh, well, he's got a psychological problem. This is not a real illness. But we had a little, little, we should have realized that this might happen again because the Vietnam vet wasn't treated very well. And when they kept saying, you know, this is happening to my body, and that's happening to my body, and, you know, we're having children, there's something wrong, and 
nobody uh, wanted to hear that either, did they? Well, you're exactly right. And that's why I say I owe every Vietnam veteran an apology. Because when they were coming back from over there and were sick, I was listening to the news media. I was a young buck nurse getting ready to join the Air Force Reserve, and, and they told me, uh, the media told me, these guys are a bunch of guys who came back with a foot fungus and want to be taken care of for a lifetime. They're babies. They're just squalish, yeah. They're a bunch of gold bricks, mm -hmm. and I believed that. I didn't know they had a disease that might kill them. I didn't know they were going to have deformed children later on. And do you know that we have never, ever treated any of the Agent Orange veterans? They've never been treated. To this day, they've been given a check for six hundred dollars and told to go away. And thank you very much. Six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. The majority of them have been paid less than a thousand dollars. And so we now have, and, and everybody thinks they've been taken care of because the good media, uh, on behalf of the Pentagon, that you know Clinton came out and said, "Oh, we're going to take care of these veterans." They were not taken care of. And now, the wives that are married to Vietnam veterans now have sons that are Gulf War veterans. And we have a Vietnam Veterans Wives group that is just formed for that reason. And the sad part is, those women are in charge of making a quilt now for all of the deaths of Agent Orange and the deaths of Gulf War illness, to which the Pentagon has never, ever addressed the deaths of these people. Did, did, did this not come to, uh, uh, now these are all whitewashes, these so-called investigations, but did, did this not come to a House investigation? It did. And there was only one real true investigation. And by the way, the report of that investigation has been taken out of the government printing office. You can't even purchase it any longer. This is 103-900, and it is the United States dual-use exports to Iraq. And it's the Committee Housing, Banking, and um, um, the Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. Well, and we go ahead and get a close-up of that. I, 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 would, I would hope, yeah. That's, uh, this is a a 600-page uh, document that's no longer available from the government printing office. And if I were a Gulf War veteran, I'd be pretty furious to know that I couldn't find out why I was sick. It's in here. It's all in here. This is Senator Don Regal's committee in which he did this in 1993 and 1994, came out with his final report, and the report is scathing. It literally um, calls this a cover-up. It talks about the antibiotics that were effective for Gulf War veterans in 1993. It talks about the violent um, uh, mental attacks they're having right now in which they're doing violent crimes, Gulf War veterans. Uh, it mentions everything. It talks about the company that sold those biological warfare agents to Saddam Hussein right here in the United States. Right I was going to say, you're going to tell us, aren't you, that they came from here? Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. we created him. Why shouldn't we sell him? Those? We did. We created him. We created Saddam Hussein. Let me tell you the four things that this report says that you've not heard. Uh, from the United States government. First of all, the summary of this 600-page document is one, nuclear and biological, chemi uh, biological and chemical agents were used. Two, our troops are not just sick, they are dying. Three, the disease is communicable. And four, we knowingly exported to Saddam Hussein with the full knowledge of the Department of Commerce and the CDC the weapons of mass destruction, the biological warfare agents. Which brings us into the whole thing now as to where we stand with Saddam Hussein, which is another whole story we'll get to in a minute. But I think that's very important to understand what is going on now it has a lot to do with what has been covered up over the past four or five years from the American people, because now it's all going to come out. Their house of cards is going to fall down. You think so? I, mean, I they, do. They've kept a pretty good house of cards for a long time. They sure have. but. General Schwartz Not just Kong. in this, but in everything else. Yes. Yeah. But, th but, but this is just blatant. Now. Yes, you do. It is. It's just blatant. You know, you've got too many dying veterans right now. And General Schwarzkopf, uh, in 1993, we made a video that has evidence on it, strictly evidence. And in it, we accused General Schwarzkopf of not having told the truth in September of this year before a committee hearing. And all of a sudden, three weeks after this video comes out and is on the Art Bell Show, General Schwarzkopf, admits uh, on September 15, 1997, that he did not tell the Senate the truth when he testified in 1997. This is the first big domino to fall. Get a close-up of that one, quick. This was in 19, September 15, 1997, USA Today. And I will tell you that this is going to be the beginning. Gulf illness treated cavalierly. 
And I'll read you a statement from this. The statement is, Gulf War illness in the years following 1991 conflict with Iraq were handled, uh, was handled very cavalierly by the Pentagon, says Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf told Gannett News Service he regretted not telling senators earlier this year about a chemical weapons case involving an Ohio soldier. It says unpublished battlefront reports showing that Schwarzkopf knew about the soldier in 1991 raised questions about why he told Congress this year he had no knowledge of anyone being exposed to chemical weapons. Then over here, they asked Schwarz Schwarzkopf why he didn't tell the truth, and he said, I wish I had now. It wasn't a question of it slipping my mind. I should have told the truth. Now, this is the unpublished battlefront report that General Schwarzkopf did not reveal. We put a copy of it in our documentation package that was in the video, and this is an actual nuclear, biological, and chemical log Keep of General finger. Schwarzkopf. This is an NBC log uh, dated um, 3 March of 1991. And General Schwarzkopf had to read these documents every, every single day. day. right. It came from Central Command, CENTCOM. And uh, General Schwarzkopf had full knowledge of this information. Now, that's what an NBC log looks like. It's been declassified, and they are um, not available any longer. If you do a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request, it's not going to look like this. It's going to be redacted. But we have some of the copies, the original ones, and we're making them as fast as we can. But let me just read to you um, what General okay, Schwarzkopf knew. At 15:15 uh, 15, 15 in the afternoon, uh, that's 3:15. It says Lieutenant Colonel Wade advised that Colonel Dunn has confirmed that the soldier of the Third Armored Division does have blisters characteristic of H. Mustard chemical agent. Now, see, the question had been raised: Were there any biological or chemical exposures? And he said, No, there was none. In fact, the official statement from the Pentagon is: There is no evidence, classified or unclassified to show that biological or chemical agents were used. And that's an absolute lie. An absolute lie. But Joyce, it's just such a big lie. I mean, it's just so, it's just, it's more than a lie, it's betrayal. Well, it is. It's a betrayal, but it is also a public health hazard because even if we talk about um, what happened with uh, the Gulf War veterans over there, and General Schwarzkopf's not telling the truth, that's one thing. But now, look at the innocent people. Austin was a military town during that time. How many military people have now transferred this disease to is someone it, else? Is that the right number, Joyce? 281? That's correct. Okay. 587, 54, Right, 37. that's yeah. the number that they can contact uh -huh. if they need okay. to get in touch with me, because we don't want anyone left frustrated or uh, without any place to turn to, because this is too serious a but subject. Right, you're saying Austin is a military town, right. And because of its being a military town, San Antonio being a huge right. military town. Right, oh yes. I mean, now we're having large numbers of cases of a new disease that nobody ever heard about before 1991 that everybody's taking for granted now called fibromyalgia. Nobody that, ever heard about it before 1991. No, but and... Uh, is that all correct? Is that right? Is that your it. website, www? Has the address as far as... Uh, the website is www.gulfwarvets.com, but it's all small letters, not large letters. www.gulfwarvets.com, and our address is Gulf War 3506 Highway 6 South, number 117, Sugarland, Texas, 774-78-4401. The phone number is 281-587-5437. You can leave a number and I can get back to you. And again, the website is www.gulfwarvets.com. Okay, and what and what were you saying? What is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia. Okay, because that on in the the talk show circuit, that's a word that has come into being. I, that's funny you should say that because I thought, well, I'm just dumb, right, Jeff? <laughs> I didn't know that word, but I would say probably in the last ten months or a year, maybe that word has started to come up again and again, and so that's it. That's oh, all. Well, that explains a lot. Did you ever hear about fibromyalgia before 1991? Did you, Jeff? No. no, I haven't. In fact, I haven't even heard of it before you well, did. Well, you're all different. Yeah. <laughs> you're all I'm different. You listen, listen to the radio. Okay. <laughs> okay, how about chronic fatigue syndrome? Oh, I've yeah, got sometimes that. Sometimes I yeah. think I have We that. have okay. that, yeah. <laughs> all right, chronic fatigue is, is a big disease that you've seen in epidemic proportions since 1991. Now, what we now know is that 62% of the chronic fatigue patients are now positive for the same biological warfare agent the Gulf War veterans have. Now, where does this come from? 
why do we have people reporting that um, they have been doctors and nurses taking care of Gulf War veterans and now they have the disease? And they test positive in their blood for it. So we're not talking people that are just, uh, you know, uh, being biased by what they hear or right. want to play sick mm -hmm. or take on the symptoms. We're talking about people that are actually testing positive now. And this blood test, by the way, maybe I should explain. We have identified a biological warfare agent. It is called Mycoplasma incognitus. It is a biological warfare agent that is not found in nature. We believe it's man-made. The DNA sequences are so rare, it's got to be man-made. It was identified at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Who, who identified that? Dr. Garth Nicholson. You've probably had him on <laughs> your program, haven't you? I'm, I'm baiting her. Yeah, he and his wife. Well, and his wife, Nancy, is that Dr. Right? Nancy She's Nicholson. She's a doctor, but That's their right. daughter got sick, didn't she? That's right. She? Right. And so they, you three are probably the big, big uh, flies in the ointment because you Well, we're the pain in the backside of the Pentagon right well, now. Well, I was going to let you and say it, but I'd be proud to be the too. back. Yeah, that's it. But you three, are, and you're all two doctors and a very uh, experienced nurse. And, and, well, and of course, the, he lost his job. I, can I say that on the air? Sure. Yeah. He lost his job because he was telling the truth. That's right. He was a tenured professor for 15 years at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. He and Dr. Nancy Nicholson identified this biological warfare agent, and I think it's important to understand why. His daughter was a, um, uh, on a Black Hawk helicopter doing yeah. deep insertions into Iraq. She comes back with a disease in 1991, and all of a sudden the entire family gets the disease. Now, he was trained to go into a lab and find out why there is a disease. That's what he what does. Causes it. That's, That's right. right. That's what he does. He's a cell biology professor. And and we better, you know, just kiss the ground he walks on because no doubt. He's telling, a hero. He's a hero not only in this but in many other things in his life, Joyce. He's made That's our right. lives better. He is a, is one of the probably the sixty minutes told me that they said he's one of the most well re well respected cancer researchers in America. Uh, right. Yes, in this entire country. Yes. And this is how he got repaid for telling the truth. Yeah. Um, it makes, I'm about to cry. It makes me so mad. I know. I know. Well, it just makes me furious. Have you, have you met him before? No, just on the phone. Person. Just on the phone. He is an incredible person. He wants nothing more than to see Gulf War veterans treated. And so for three years, he collected blood samples at MD Anderson Cancer Center and tested them at his own expense. And, uh, he told me one time on a Sunday afternoon, he came in, he said, Joyce, I just came in and they've unhooked my freezer again. And his freezer of specimens was left um, to heat up and, and uh, it didn't happen and they were able to save the specimens. But then he was later told that if he didn't stop the Gulf War research that he was essentially out of there. So he did and um, he went to California. There are only two places in the country that now test for this biological warfare agent and that is, both of them are in California. One is Dr. Nicholson and then there's another lab in California. Um, but you don't have very many labs that test for biological warfare agents because up until 1991, we didn't need it. Well, and according to a lot of people now, we don't have it anywhere, right? That's correct. <laughs> so yeah. there in you fact, are. We should talk about what the official government position is right now, the Pentagon well, position. Let me just mention first, folks, uh, if y'all, this is a live program. Do you, do you mind taking some calls later? At the end Please. Of the pro okay. Uh, we. We've been running tapes down here. This is a live program, so if you all want to, it's 477-ACTV, folks. 477-ACTV if you want to talk to Joyce Isaacs or Joyce Riley. They'll be visiting with us. Or Jeff Davis. Or me, but uh, I'm actually learning from this because I have to admit I don't know a whole lot about what she's saying, but, but it, is, it is interesting. And I hope you and I don't <laughs> need to know very much about That's it. Right. That's a very selfish, That's um, right. but I just, it, it makes me mad. But this is another thing we might bring up. It looks like we're going to get back into it with him sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And when I, I just think about things, don't laugh, I used to write farm scripts, anthrax and those things. He, this man, he has no regard for anything but his way in the world. And we may all, who knows what could happen to us, Joyce. Now, if you're not, if you're not concerned about veterans, you better start being concerned about yourself. I want to just make sure I, I understand. You're you're basically stating that you believe that uh, through vaccines that that, that that our our military people were pumped pumped whatever is causing this. I think the majority of those, especially those that didn't go over there, 
because there are those that did not go to Saudi Arabia that are just as sick, and those that did go that are sick. And I think the ones that did go probably got a combination of oh, both the mm -hmm. chemical and biological A exposures. double whammy, yeah. yes. and the vaccines. Now, I myself think that I probably got whatever is relative to the vaccinations. And uh, let me go into the speculative a little bit because this is not something that I could actually prove to you, although the Washington Times says that they can prove it. And, uh, the Washington Times says they are? Yes. And the Washington Times and Insight Magazine printed an article about the sickness and secrecy of the Gulf War illness. And I'll just show here. Um, they printed this. Um, it was by Paul Rodriguez, August 25th of 1997. And he talks about the use of something called squalene. That squalene is being found in the blood of Gulf War veterans now. And to the tune of about uh, 300 and a majority of 400 of them well, what is had squalene. What is okay, it? squalene is a uh, synthetic adjuvant, a compound that is used only in two instances that we know about in the United States right now. So if you have squalene in your blood, that means you've been exposed to one of these two things. Number one, it's an experimental malarial compound that has not been used uh, widely. And the second one is an anti-AIDS vaccine. Now, the, the thesis of what um, Washington Times and the British press is saying, as well as Insight Magazine, is that Gulf War veterans were the recipient of anti-AIDS experimental vaccines during the Gulf War. Without their knowledge. Without their knowledge. Now, if this is true, um, I would think that every American would rise their feet immediately and say, I'm sorry, that's it. You don't do that to our people without their knowledge. Because we're not talking about giving immunizations to people for the sake of protecting them in a battle zone area. You don't need an anti-AIDS vaccine. And that's right. The reason they did it was because, as you know in the military, you get tested mandatorily whether you want to or not, so mm -hmm. you're the best guinea pig group in the world. Yeah, I often wonder what those shots they were pumping me with. That's right, and <laughs> you don't I have any way of knowing. These things, yeah. yeah, and your shot record has a bunch of little squiggly lines on it. Have you heard the rumors about the uh, that the AIDS virus could be a man-made deal? Have you the heard rumors? Well, I'm, I've I'm, heard I'm, the I'm, rumors. Well, that's, that's all I'll leave it at that. I, I've heard uh, more than that, but no rumors about it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think that we need to start Part of looking at the population at, control program. Oh, um, I you think don't go that far, huh? Or maybe you do. I don't know. See, I don't know that much oh, about. Oh, I'll tell you. So. I'll tell you exactly what I think. I think if you take your military and you put them in a theater of operations, and they get exposed to something, I don't care if it's cannon fodder. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's alien dust, if such a thing exists. I don't care what it is. And you bring those people back here and those people say, I'm sick. And you start writing them off, off as being head cases and you don't treat them when you know a treatment exists. That is intentional. That is criminal intent to allow those people to die. Yes, I'm accusing them of that. Absolutely. Because they know that the antibiotics are effective. I was treated with the antibiotics. That's what Dr. Nicholson is treating. Wait a minute. Those. In other words, they if if they had if they were treated with the antibiotic, if this if people would, if our government would be honest about what's going on, Joyce, we could probably help a lot of people. Oh, we could have saved thousands of lives. What is it? An antibiotic that is it anything that's uh, we might know? Oh if, yeah, absolutely. And here again, here's my disclaimer: I am not a physician. I'm not practicing medicine. But Dr. Garth Nicholson recommends the antibiotic doxycycline. Doxycycline. It's a tetracycline derivative. I was going to say, cheap. it's, yeah. And, and I think probably you get that for other things your, your doctor sure. might prescribe. Yes. But if you're a DOD facility or a VA facility, you are not allowed to give a Gulf War veteran doxycycline. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, wait, wait a minute. You're not allowed to prescribe those in, in those two no. facilities. They're not allowed to. In fact, I've had many physicians call me from the VA system saying that uh, they get audited, uh, they get reprimanded, and it's just simply not available to go for veterans. Now, the reason being, and I've had them explain this to me. See, first of all, the disease we're talking about here, the mycoplasma, is sensitive to doxycycline. I was treated with it. Hundreds of Gulf War veterans have been treated. But you can't get it at a DOD facility or VA facility, so you have to go to a doctor outside. But most doctors don't know anything about it because the Pentagon tells them there's no Gulf War illness, right? So they're going to say, I'm sorry, you know, you need to go to the VA and get your Prozac and be quiet. 
that's what they are giving. Over 90% of the Gulf War veterans that have contacted me have been offered Prozac by the Veterans Administration. Now, <laughs> we see a problem here. We sent, they're saying that 90% of the Gulf War veterans that went to fight the war over there are head cases. That 600,000 of our veterans are head cases? Our, I don't think so. Right, our veterans that at that time, they were certainly good enough to lay their life on the line for, the, for, for me, weren't they? That's right, and they were willing to die for this country. That's their only crime. That's the only thing they can be convicted of doing anything wrong. They were willing to die for this country. And now we repay them by placing them on Prozac. And I, can, I cannot tell you the problems we're seeing from that. The veterans that are doing um, acts of violence, um, the veterans that are committing suicide, it is very, very frightening. And that's the reason I'm on here tonight, and I appreciate you're giving me the opportunity to say this, is if you're a veteran and you're sick, don't give up. Because we're here for you, there are people that are here for you, and don't give up. Do not think your country has abandoned you. Your country doesn't know about this yet, but they're going to know. And I want every veteran to know that there are people everywhere that do care and want to know the truth. About and this. the lady you're looking at right now, uh, the, you're the one. You're really the hero. Well, and I, I would think that you, uh, one, how many phone calls you've taken. One, uh, you know, uh, because you just have always said, you know, call me, call me, call me. I'm here. And your life is, is at this point, and your husband's too, it revolves around this, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's all we do. That's all we think about. Day and night now, we get Gulf War veterans phone calls, um, especially from the 82nd Airborne, the 101st Airborne, Big Red One out of Kansas. Um, they're really sick. They're very sick. Um, Third Armored Division, Second Armored Division, uh, Fort Bliss, a lot of those people are sick. Fort Bragg is a, a very sick base. And they're not allowed, if they're still in the military, to talk about it. Now, here's a, here's a statistic oh. that's very important, and that is that 90% of the Gulf War veterans that served are already out of the military. So that's including Guard, Reserve, and Active Duty. 90% are already out. So Colin Powell said there was going to be a downsizing right after the war of 25%. We've seen 90%. The Big Red One in Kansas was, was letting out people to the tune of 350 a day because they knew they were going to be sick. They knew they had had these exposures. Um, they knew there were going to be problems because people started getting dur sick during the Gulf War. So now we've got the problem of what's happened to these people. They're in your city. They're in everybody's city now. And the problem with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia is that this disease affects now the general population. Six million fibromyalgia patients, 18 million chronic fatigue patients. Where did these come from? Well, we know that mycoplasma has been experimented with by the U.S. government since the er, since 1970, late 1970s and 1980s, as a carrier agent for other things. And now we don't know what it's carrying, but we know that about 40 percent of the people that contact us at the American Gulf War Veterans Association have damage to their immune systems. They're suffering from multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre, Lou Gehrig's uh, scleroderma, lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue very serious diseases. Let me just say this, Joyce. I, <clears throat> can I, can I, this is just my opinion. And I, and I, I, uh, my opinion is, is that we're not going to get very far. Well, I, I mean, you're obviously doing good work with all this, but it, it, I mean, with what you've said here tonight, you know, you're accusing the DOD and Pentagon of cover-ups and all, and I totally agree with all that. But then when you make a statement to the point that, that these people were over there fighting for this country, that that's to me that's just that's that's kind of defeating the whole purpose for this because that's not in my opinion that's not what this was all about. Okay, well let's say that's I mean, what we believe we were is, doing. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. That needs to be stressed okay. then because as long oh, as we absolutely. continue to maintain these lies and throwing out the, this rhetoric that the other side throws out, but in, in I think it's going to be harder to 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 to, to get people to accept this. But in what, good faith <clears throat> is what 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 we all are trying to say, isn't it? In good faith, men and women said, I will go fight, right? I they, will serve. Right. That's right. A I and that's serve. exactly what you were doing. Sure. And, and but do you, do you you come to the understanding now that, that, that we were dupes? Absolutely, I that, know that. That, that. Those wars have nothing to do with protecting the Constitution or defending or protecting the, the, the borders of, of the United States. Or oh, absolutely. Well, it's, that was a 6 o'clock news war. <coughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I think yeah. all you have to do is look at what's going on right now with Saddam Hussein. I mean, he, we're going to go to war with a guy, or we started all this escalation because somebody put a, a piece of paper over a lens camera and wouldn't let him see in the room what was in the room. I mean, is that a reason to go fight a war, or is that no, that's, affecting that's our boundaries? Not why we're do of course we're not. We're doing it because uh, uh, he's uh, usurping the UN resolution. So we're supposed to send our young 18, 19 year old people to go fight because he's not the, he's, right. his airplanes are. are Usurping the UN uh, no fly zone. Oh, well, that's let, what no, we're supposed wait. to be doing now. No, wait, let me, let me give you some information <laughs> here. Here's some little known information. That no fly zone is not a UN imposed no fly zone. Were you aware of that? Well, that's what the media is telling us, isn't it? That, that the reason why the, the, uh, the, the weapons inspections, you know, this here's a, you, Iraq, a sovereign nation, supposedly. Right. And they're, they're being forced now by this thug agency called the UN to, 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 be, to have their, uh, their nation uh, violated, plus the, uh, the uh, Iraq is disobeying their, the UN no-fly zone. That's, that's not a reasons. UN no-fly zone. See, that's what they've made you think. No, well, that's what that's they're That's a US. Them. It's a US imposed no-fly zone. And we bought into it. That's why only US, uh, only US planes go over that no-fly zone. No UN flights go over that. It's so the U-2 flights, right. the U-2 <laughs> flights are the UN-imposed area, or the UN-imposed, th those are the UN flights. Our spy planes. But you planes. see, we were talking to, I was talking but to... the point is, neither one of those reasons are worth me sending Absolutely my son to not. Go die uh -uh. No way. Okay. No way. But Never. I'm also saying that we don't even know what's true when it comes to the no-fly zone area. Also, Nazar Hamdoun, who was talking to a friend of mine who wrote the book on Saddam Hussein, and she is not pro-Arab or pro-Israeli, and neither am I. Right. I'm just saying We're just she here. happened to do a biography right. book on him. It's in the in the, all the libraries now. But um, her name is Nita Renfrew, and she was talking to Nazar Hamdoun the other day, who was the UN uh, Iraq ambassador to the UN. Nazar Hamdoun had said two things to say. First of all, people don't realize that is a U.S. Im uh, imposed no-fly zone, and secondly, he has not been allowed before the UN Security Council. Now ask me, or tell me why we would not allow someone to go before the UN Security Council when we are going to exhaust all means of diplomatic diplomacy? Why is it that we have not allowed um, Nizar Hamdoun to go before the UN Security Council? I don't understand that either. So there's a lot of information we're not getting. We watch the boob tube and, and we watch six o'clock news and if it happens on the 6 o'clock news, it's true to most people. And uh, that's why I use the statement, you know, if, um, if a tree falls in the forest and Dan Rather doesn't cover it, does it still make a noise? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's the way people are. That's, if it's not on the news, it didn't happen. Good girl, but that's good. But my point mm -hmm. is taken by you. And you are exactly is, right. Neither one of those reasons are worth no way. any of us sending our no 18 year old kids to go die. Absolutely die. not. Oh. But I mean, I'm saying that even that is a contracted, protracted reasons that don't even exist. I'm thinking that the whole thing is made up to the point where it serves another agenda. Well, yeah. and, uh, and none I, of those reasons are worth I us going I keep telling you, uh, we, you know, we, we created Saddam. What, what's, Absolutely. What's happening with the video? Uh, What's happening with the... Uh, oh, I don't... Did you take Dan, uh, Dan Rather's name in vain? It's off. <laughs> little joke there. He's up some. I don't either. Well, something. Some our monitor's it, down, okay? And we can't tell. our monitor's down, or uh -huh, I, I don't uh -huh. know what's happening. Uh, okay, let's go We're on. still in. on? Okay. It's all right. It's it just the monitor. The yeah. It's the monitor. Okay. Okay, let me just mention a couple of things here, folks. Um, first off, we have these... Uh, this is, we're head, entering into about our seventh month now of uh, these downsizing government seminars. And uh, when are you scheduled to, to be there, Joyce? Last Sunday uh, of January. It's 30th. Is it okay. 30th of 30th. January? So, mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, what, six weeks from now you're going to be Correct. there? Correct. Okay. And it's the last Sunday of every month. And Joyce, you commented last week that you that you you may we may find you out there. Well, now that I'm ambulatory, unless I get some of the stuff she's talking about, you know, I catch everything, Joyce. And if you start, <laughs> I would thank goodness she's a nurse. No, I'll be there. I've been out out long enough. I need to be loose now. Now, also on February the February edition, I believe it's February 22nd, uh, the Jeff Davis Show has uh, managed to get several of the. Uh, surviving Branch Davidians down here to Austin for the seminar. 
so that that's something to, 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 to look forward to. And I believe in March, uh, we have uh, tentatively, I think we have Tex Mars, a friend of mine, uh, uh, scheduled to be there. And of course, the regular uh, host of speakers and whatnot. So that's one, uh, one thing. Do you know how lucky you are to have Tex Mars here? Oh, Tech's a great guy. Yeah. He's incredible. I just did a bunch of shortwave with him. I mean, I don't think Austin understands how fortunate they are to have him here. And one other thing, folks, we are starting a second series down here. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're starting a second series down here. It's starting on uh, the Pagan uh, Festival Day, with, with what I call it. Christmas. It's the beginning of the winter solstice under the disguise of Christ. But we're starting on December 25th, Thursday at 5 p.m. It's going to be Thursdays from 5 to 6 p.m. We're starting a second. It's a tape series uh, beginning in uh, it's about two and a half weeks from now. It's going to start on, the, like I say, the pagan, uh, pagan festival for the, uh, for the uh, people who celebrate that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, our show, Mondays, on Channel 10. Now, we've had some callers that have been holding for a long time. You want to go? Let's talk to them. Yeah, oh, Joyce needs to talk. Anybody needs to talk with Joyce, you need to <laughs> do it now. We need to talk. Okay, who's the first caller on the air? Uh, Joyce, Riley. Uh, pardon me? Uh, Joyce? Yes. yes, sir. What's your first name? I'm Pat. Hi, Pat. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I went to a post-traumatic stress unit up there in Topeka, Kansas. And uh, my two roommates up there were Gulf War veterans. About two months after I got out of that program, I came up with a, uh, looked like all kinds of little pimples all over, oh. all over my body. And then they spread out and they looked like ringworms. They were about the size of, uh, oh, an orange, about six inches around. And, uh, they said, well, it wasn't ringworms, so they gave me this, this fungal cream. They said, you must have picked something up in the shower or something, which was impossible because every time someone takes a shower, they sprayed it down with Clorox and water. Okay. Anyway, uh, it got worse and worse and worse. I didn't run any fever or any temperatures or anything, but I, I slept all the time. And they gave me the DEX, like cycling. It was uh, white pills. And they gave me this antibiotic cream. Um... Uh, it's T R I A M C I N O L O N E acetonidine. They gave me that. Then um, the, they cut out a bunch of uh, you know little sections and sent it into five or six different major you know clinics to see what it was, and it all came back negative. Uh, they didn't. They couldn't uh, decide, or, or or they wouldn't tell me what it was. Do you think that's Gulf War syndrome? Well, let me tell you that I cannot diagnose anything because I'm not uh, a physician. No, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, does it sound like it? Thanks for your call, Pat. We need, well, I want to get okay. on some other calls. Right, here. Pat. And did you get the phone Go number? Ahead, Joyce. Yeah. Yeah, let me say that, unfortunately, everything you say fits with what we're talking about with the Gulf War illness. And I am not a doctor. I'm not trying to prescribe or diagnosis, diagnose. But let me say to you that everything you just said fits very, very much with the Gulf War illness, that it starts like uh, pimples in the rash that Gulf War veterans have to a large extent. Then it goes into the ringworm size um, oh. uh, presentation. And usually the VA will then give a cream, a fungal cream for it. And you were lucky to get prescribed doxycycline if you were prescribed that. Um, if that was what you said, I didn't understand. But because that's very unusual that they would do that. Um, but that sounds like the presentation of it, becoming very sick, very tired. Uh, those are all the symptoms. Now the problem that we have with Gulf War veterans that are living in close relationship with each other is that people tend to eat and drink after each other. You know, they, you pick up a glass somebody else has used or you eat something that somebody else had. And uh, that's one of the problems. And I would say to you that um, the possibility is there, very much, uh, very much so. Now, there is the blood test like we were talking about, but it cost $150. Uh, on the screen right now, what you're seeing is a teramycin powder and tetracycline for fish. And unfortunately, that is what Gulf War veterans have done, is they have gone to the feed stores because they cannot get the antibiotics. Our military are now going to feed stores to get the antibiotics to treat themselves and their families, which is incredibly atrocious. 
Um, so that's why we've agreed to pay for doxycycline for anyone that cannot afford it, is that we will find the money. We will get the money for you. We don't want any veteran going to a feed store. But t the answer is yes to his question, is that is what I'm hearing from other Gulf War veterans. Okay, next caller, you're on the air with Joyce Isaacs and George. Well, before we do that, let me just mention that, Joyce, I want to mention, uh, you, ha wait a minute, well, hold on just a minute, yeah, caller. We need to take these Thank calls. you for holding, by the way. When, when, when is your, uh, you're starting a new radio program. Well, I mean, not, right now I'm doing editorials. That I mean, can you imagine I would have an opinion in the, in the, <laughs> the, the morning drive and the afternoon drive. And, uh, well, they started last week, and then I went out and did, recorded some today. So, uh, and it, my boss said, you're just too sweet. But he doesn't realize that uh, <laughs> I can, you know, call you something and make you really like it. You know that, Jeff. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing for now, so I'm getting a chance to write a little bit. It's on K News. Uh, K News, 1530. 15? Okay. Okay, caller, you're Wait. on the air. Hello. Hear me? Yes, yes, sir. This is Recon Robert. Hello, brother. How you doing? You're on with Joyce Isaacs and Joyce Riley. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I attended Joyce's uh, seminar yesterday. This is a angel sitting is. on your right. She is. No, that's very kind of you. Thank you. For the young man that's the nom vet, uh, I know I can't mention names, but uh, I got rid of my dose of that crap with herbal remedies, homeopathic. But I do have some questions. You ever heard of that before? Yes, I have. Yes, I recommend okay. looking into it. Yes. Uh, there is uh, a person in Colorado who has a, a wonderful remedy. It takes about a year. Okay, wait a minute, fuck right. caller. I'm sorry. We're, I'm sorry. We're going to have to do something here. Do we got to go to the black thing for a minute? Tell him about George Bush and his wife getting ill. Wait, wait, just, wait just a minute, okay. Robert. Okay, we're, we're going to have to. Okay, go ahead, and I guess we can go on then. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're I changing understand. tapes, so we're going to put this on rotation, so we got to do this. Yes, sir. I understand that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bush got ill. And that then, is correct. Yeah. Um, George Bush was in uh, Saudi Arabia for Thanksgiving in, of 1990, and he did come down with a disease called um, Graves' disease. This Graves' disease is um, something that we're seeing among many, many Gulf War veterans. Uh, whether he got it from that, I don't know or not. I, I could never say, but Barbara did get it, and to one of the physicians I was talking to, he said that the chances of getting it all in the same family at the same time is just statistically impossible. Thank you. Now, the other question is, uh, how many known cases do we have around the world, not just here in America, but other armed forces? Okay, with the military, or with the, yeah, let me talk about the military coalition forces is that we know that there were 26 coalition or 27 coalition countries that served during the Gulf War. Out of that, one country and only one country does not report sick and dying Gulf War veterans, and that is France. So all the other coalition countries that served alongside of us are ill now and have sick Gulf War veterans, dying Gulf War veterans. Yes, ma'am. Is, is there any statistic on death? Oh, in these other nations? Well, the only thing I can tell you that Dr. Nicholson has shared with me is that 20% of the people in the theater of operations now report illnesses within their country, and that would be uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, all except with the exception of Syria. We don't have any figures on Syria. But that 20% of those populations are ill now. We know that there have been at least 1 million, and we believe 2 million deaths in Iraq. Oh, now, one of the concerns I have is that these children they keep showing on TV and all these deaths that are a result of the embargoes, the UN imposed embargoes, may not be that. They may be as a result of the Gulf War illness because we know it's over there. Um, all you have to do is talk to Iranian or Iraqi, both. yeah, or both, both yeah. but Iranian and Iraqi taxi drivers and they can tell you about the deaths that they've been having over there and the deformities in the children. Let me just mention something. Uh, you know, I had a friend that went up to Ohio last June and an old friend of mine from 20 years back mentioned to me, he never believed it, you know, he, he didn't, didn't listen to a lot of things that I said. Well, I don't, you know, I don't really talk to him that much anymore, but, but he, he brought up that he had a brother that recently died. He was 40 years old, and they believed that it was linked to what you're saying. He even knew who you were and had been studying your tapes and everything. So, I mean, when, when it hits somebody yeah. directly that you... 
That's right, and that's why I think everybody better start listening. If you don't have any other motive except a selfish motive, you better that's start right. listening. Everybody better understand how serious this is. This is not my opinion, and this is not my documentation. This is government documentation that I brought with me that shows that they have known the truth about this disease well, also. We're when is it going to stop? But we're not real sure how it's spread. That's what some Well, it's spread, find. first of all, by blood transfusions. We know that the Gulf War veterans that came back and were encouraged to donate blood at their Garden Reserve units, you know, when you have a unit training activity on the weekends and your commander tells you to donate blood, yeah. you don't say, well, sir, I don't feel like it mm -hmm. today. Um, you donate. But all that's been stopped, hasn't it? No, it has not. It absolutely hasn't? not. No, Gulf War veterans are going into blood banks all over this country every day and donating blood. And you, because there is no Gulf War illness. Don't you understand? Oh, I forgot. Because the Pentagon there says there is no Gulf War illness, <laughs> therefore it's okay. I don't know, but I hope I don't have to have a blood transfusion. Exactly. I'm being selfish now. Okay. Exactly. And we have made this allegation against the blood banks. And of course, as we go into blood banks and I talk with the directors and tell them that they are on notice. Here's the evidence right here. It's communicable. It says so right here in 103-600. It says the disease is communicable. Now, if you don't understand communicable means in blood, in semen, in bodily fluids, uh, why do you think? You, you were talking about is this population control. I'm not saying it was meant as population control, but I am saying that if you have a disease and you allow your people in the general population to get it and you allow people to have blood transfusions and disperse this disease, it is going to pro control your population whether you want to or not. Well, not only that, Joyce, but I, I kind of look at things as maybe, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hegelian principle, mm -hmm. where you, you know, the one, you, you create the crisis and then you create fear and hysteria, and then step three, you come in with the solution, meaning bigger government, more steel, you know, more taking over our taxes and resources. Uh, you come in and, and present the solution in step three for the, for the problem you created in step one and two. Oh. That, I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that the enemy, that the people that control this system do things like that. That's I know. what I'm suggesting. I understand you're <laughs> suggesting that. And, but listen to this. But John Birch Society has just <laughs> accused me in their latest magazine in the New American of trying to scare people into the New World Order. That's what they were saying. John McManus wrote me the nastiest letter saying that there was no Gulf War illness, or at least if there was a government cover-up, the new American would have printed it. May I interrupt you briefly and then I'll let uh, you Sure, off. I'm sorry. I, I, I've got one comment to say, and this is to uh, only for help. I challenge all true Christians to do like we are going to do. Save an extra 10% a tithe to send to your people. I can't, we can't do that. We can't do that We don't do that. Hey, cut, 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 cut. cut. Right. Well, I'm sorry, Robert. We can't do that. Disconnect him real quick. We can't do that down <laughs> here. We'll get, that's a, that's, we got suspended for doing that down here. Okay, next caller, you're on the air. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask Joyce if she knows. Uh, see, I got a letter from Dr. Nichols when I was in prison and uh, in regards to the same thing. And, and do you know of any epidemic of this being broke, broken out in the TDC system through the John Seeley Hospital through chemical testing? An epidemic of it in the John Seeley? Uh -huh. Well, no, it, it was supposed to come from the John Seeley Hospital, but the same symptoms, same epidemic uh, uh, of chemical yeah. testing before uh, Gulf War treatment. We have a lot of inmates in the Texas prison system now that have the same sy symptoms, but many of the institutional doctors are putting it off to various other types of illness. Right. Let me ask you a question. Have you, um, you said you were test. were you tested for it? I was not tested, but I had an, uh, an inmate in the cell next to me who had been tested for it, and he had the same symptoms you just described earlier on the show, and there are others in the same unit, and uh, we have received word through the Coalition of Prisoners' Rights in New Mexico that this came out through John C. Lee Hospital. Okay, let me explain this whole system. Did you have anything else to say, or do you want me to just no, answer you on the air? Thanks for your call, brother. You betcha. Okay, let me explain why the prisoners have something to do with this. He was stating that he was a prisoner at Texas Department of Corrections. We now know from some of the research that Dr. Nicholson has done, as well as a lady named Sally Medley, who was, by the way, at the meeting last night from Huntsville, Texas, has been doing a lot of research into where this disease started. In the 1980s, we found the same mycoplasmal outbreak 
of the same biological warfare agent that we're talking about right now that Gulf War veterans have was found in Huntsville, Texas at the Texas Department of Corrections. Now we now know that some of the doctors that were working on this as a research project um, and we also know uh, that they were there at Huntsville at that time. We know that some immunizations were given to some of the prisoners there and it was called a flu vaccine. Though it was given intradermally in this area which is never done, we know that people such as what he was just talking about came down ill with this disease. And right now in Huntsville, Texas, there are something like 67 cases of multiple sclerosis. Uh, and the town is, I believe, 35,000. There were prisoners that got this disease. Those prisoners, many of them have since died. The prisoners gave the guards there the disease. The guards gave it to their families. There are about 350 people now that have this disease in Huntsville, Texas. There is an ongoing investigation right now. Um, I won't mention by whom, but they are now looking into this as being uh, perhaps the testing ground prior to the Gulf War of the vaccination that we received. So it all comes together. But what he was saying is that the guy in the cell next to him was positive for this mycoplasma, and that is probably why. TDC at, um, at Huntsville was the one area where we found the most um, people with this disease. Now, you know something, Joyce? When people doubt what we're saying or they say, you know, you're just radical or da-da-da and our government wouldn't do this, what has come to light in the last, what, two or three years or five years maybe, the uh, Southerners, the black men that were, do you know what I'm talking about? They, okay. Tell us, you're a nurse. Tell us what happened because they were just told a bold-faced lie and many of them died. It was treating what? Syphilis? Yes. Oh, that's yes. the, the, the Tuskegee experiment. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. see, these experiments, and, and uh, we're not talking about just uh, Tuskegee. There have been experiments but going this on is since the one we know about. Okay. Yeah. Now. There have been many of these. Are you aware of the, the great the swine flu epidemic? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, this whole thing about mandatory government shots. Oh, I wouldn't take a shot for anything yeah. right now. But that, There's no way. Yeah, but the Tuskegee thing, they had people that were sick. Right. The story is that basically 399 black men, if you look at the story that appeared in the AP, uh, the AP story February 21st of this year, 399 black men were allowed to get the disease syphilis and allowed to have it for 40 years in which it was untreated even though there was penicillin at the time that would right. treat it. 40 years. 40 now years. the AP story in the Pittsburgh press said, the Pittsburgh uh, uh, newspaper, because I was there the day it came out, and, it, and I, I didn't sleep that night. I was so angry. It, oh. it says, 399 black men from 1932 to 1972, the government allowed these men to suffer and die. That was the words from the AP story. The government experimented upon these people and allowed them to suffer and die. Because they were using them just like As an lab. That's uh, right. Animals. And you know, my response to that is, how could any real American not say, I'm sorry, that is it. There it is, bold-faced in the newspaper, that the government allowed them to suffer and die during an experiment. Now, it wasn't just 399 men. It was over 6,000 people that were all involved in this because their spouses got it. That's a, their that's children were born deformed. With, yes. But nobody talks about the other 6,000 people. And so when Clinton mm. comes across the stage and he introduces apologizing. these... Apologizing. Apologizing yeah. on behalf of America and the government, yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, I, I need yeah. to tell him I had nothing to do with that. And I wouldn't have never had any, would never have had anything to do with that. But that was when we were so innocent. That's what gets me about it. Oh, yeah, was the it 30s. was a long time ago. Yeah, but you know what? 1972 is when it ended. That was the last part of the study. You know what I say when yet, Clinton George. comes across the stage and says we behalf, you know, we apologize. And he talked about how this 98-year-old guy has a garden of his own. He made it, made it look like it's good to have syphilis, you know. I mean, he, he, he was inappropriate as all get out. And then I didn't want to see him come across that stage with an apology. I wanted him to bring a list of names and indictments of people that were going to spend the rest of their lives in prison for what they had done during that experiment. You, mm -hmm. That violates everything this country stands for. Well, it violates what we stand for as humans. That's right. And it, But the thing about it, it's still not over, like you say. Who do we know that still has it from a, a child, an adult, or somebody, you know, that's still suffering? from what was passed down because it's so highly That's right. contagious. How much of the disease? How many blind people? How much of the disease in Georgia, 
Uh, you have to excuse me, us, but yeah. we're talking. No, that's right. Right. Well, I'm going to hit you with these when you're done. Okay. How much of the disease in Georgia and Mississippi and Alabama? Right. Babies yeah. that were born with things wrong with them that it shouldn't have happened. Read yes. Your read your website. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. okay. www.gulfwarvets.com is the website. And the address to write to us is Gulf War 3506 Highway 6 South, number 117. Sugarland, Texas, 77478-4401. The phone number is 281-587-5437. Leave a number and I'll call you back. Let me just, now, now, now let me just insert some of these things. I've been doing some investigation myself. I'm just going to hit you with it. Uh, Do it. The World Health Organization, that's a loving organization. That, yeah, now, that, now there are there are definite conclusions coming that that they are actually linking the World Health Organization to the spread of a lot of these these contagious diseases. Now, but, but let me just let me just take you back. Um, uh, fluoride in our water. I, I'm sorry, What I submit to you that they are poisonous on every front. Aspartame that was used by the Nazis. Uh, which is now in NutraSweet and our Diet Cokes and things like this. I'm, um, there's all types of different evidence. This food irradiation, you're hearing about this food, oh. which kills the live enzymes from our food. Mm -hmm. What I'm suggesting is through our food and water supply, what I, these, these people who, who I believe are, are the enemies of, of the American people and the world are literally poisonous in their, in the, just in their basic food and water systems. Have you, have you pondered any of that, Joyce? Oh. Have I? I will well, tell you first of all. Believe I'm me, I have. Well, what, out I just want to tell you. Oh, believe me, I have. I mean, I, I lay awake I, nights thinking well, about this stuff. I drank fluoride water, and it will not make you sterile. Okay. <laughs> well, no, this is true though. It has been linked to stomach and liver cancer. Okay, let me tell you something. Flor, if you drink enough of it. I got some. Uh, what about food irradiation? You know. Anything oh, about wait, wait, that? wait a minute. Hold on a second. Go okay. Ahead. Let me start back with fluoride because I want to mention this to you. Under Project MK Ultra, which a lot of people yeah. know of that, yeah. there were 175 sub-projects under MK Ultra, which people don't know about. One of them, and I got the declassified documents. Have you ever seen the declassified documents on no, MK Ultra? I have. See, everybody talks about it, but nobody has the documents. So I went to the to where I could find a copy of the only one of the few remaining MK Ultra documents, and I got it. And I had to take it one page at a time off the microfilm, but I got it. And in there there is a doctor, Dr. Geschichter, from the Geschichter Institute at Georgetown University, who's being asked, how did you spend all your money from MKUltra that you were given, the millions of dollars? And he said, I was investigating fluoride and chlorine and rocket fuels, halogen derivatives. And they said, what was your response? And he said, I found they caused cancer. Mm -hmm. Now that was in a 1977 <laughs> congressional hearing. Georgetown University professor said that. I didn't. I don't think that hit the but news. Do you? About, but they care about our teeth. Exactly, they care. Rat but, poison. But the aspartame too. The, 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 the Hitler used aspartame. It, it's, it's a subtle. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it kind of works the same thing. It makes it docile. Well, Have aspartame. You heard that? Absolutely. Yeah. And I've heard all of the negative that goes on oh, with yeah. aspartame. But see, the, the, this loving FDA is is approving these things. You know, supposedly, and we're supposed to believe that what they're saying, what they approve, is good for us. Oh, absolutely. We're supposed to believe whatever they Shots tell us and whatever's advertised. Us, right. Yeah, did you know that FDA does not test anything? Did you know that? They depend upon the pharmaceutical companies to test them. Oh, they're going to be honest. Yeah. All they have at stake is millions of dollars to make. What about food irradiation? Oh, oh, food, oh right. food irradiation. Now you're going to get me really going. Food irradiation makes me livid. But they got to protect our bees. Oh, no. No, uh, there minute, was only one, one thing that was that you could not irradiate, that legally you could not irradiate. What? Beef. And lo and behold, we have the Hudson Farms problem. Isn't yeah, that amazing? Yeah. I'll tell you what, get a book called um, uh, The Food That Would we Last. We can't say get a book, but in a book. In a book yeah, that could be book. found oh, at a used no. library, a yeah. used bookstore. Could you give a list of what we yeah, could we eat? Because I think it'll be shorter. It's scary. <laughs> There's just recently, they're going to they're going to irradiate everything because, think about it, if nothing will grow in it, nothing will grow in it, right? No microorganisms will grow in it. Well, how good is that going to be for you? 
Yeah. Does it change the DNA structure? Absolutely it does. Well, how about all the antibiotics they've been giving poultry and beef in all these years? Have, don't they do oh, that a lot? But you see, people don't understand that. But that's that. negative too, right? All Hello. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Our weight limits oh, wait a minute. Have we got a phone call? Yeah, we, hold on just a minute. We're being rude. Okay. No, that's all right. I, I, I just want to... Uh, so you keep studied. Keep on talking. Keep on talking. Yeah. So go ahead, ma'am. No, go go ahead. ahead. We're done. Hi, Jeff. This is Chris. Well, how you doing, sweetness? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. I wanted to tell Joyce that it was a great show yesterday. And uh, I'm kind of sorry if it seemed kind of disrespectful when you were talking about the soldier named Scott and you showed his uh, picture two weeks before his died. But right when you said that, Joyce, that flag came off that wall and I had to get a chuckle because I knew he was there with you and he was supporting you. Oh, that's kind of you. Thank you for saying that. So I just wanted to make sure that you didn't think it was disrespectful because I had a smile on my face when you said that. Thank you for saying that. Let me explain what she is saying. A while ago, they showed a young man who had a tube in his nose that was oh, very sick yes, on the picture. Just... And let me explain what that's all about. That is one of America's heroes. And I don't do that lightly. I don't show that picture up there lightly. But that was one of America's heroes. That was Scott Siefkin. He had uh, served in the Army. He served in the National Guard. He came back from the Gulf War. He had a rash. And the VA told him that there was only one thing they could do to save his life, and that was they needed to remove his skin. Well, during the meeting yesterday, as I was talking about Scott and we put his picture up there, the American flag fell down at that time. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that at the time that she had let out sort of a, um, a laugh or a comment, um, and what she was saying was Scott was with us there at the meeting. Uh, because Scott I is... I, that's right. I believe that's uh -huh. more than Jeff does. But no, I believe that's and right. Scott comes from one of the most patriotic <laughs> families. He had five brothers and sisters in the military, or five sisters that served in the military. Uh, five out of the six kids served in the military. And the flag fell off the wall. And the flag fell off the wall at the time we showed his picture. But that's one of America's heroes. In fact, um, mm. they did remove Scott's skin, and uh, the picture that we had uh, that was on the TV a little while ago was two weeks before Scott died. And that is an experiment that went awry, and uh, he died. And I will just say this, in all due respect for Scott, is that two weeks um, uh, after he died, his only son was born. And his little boy has a goal now, and that is to go get um, his daddy with a rocket ship and bring him back so that everybody will quit crying. That's, that's him right there. That's Scott Seepkin right there, one of America's heroes. Now that's the real Gulf War illness Dan rather doesn't tell you about. No, but that's a real Gulf War illness that CNN won't tell you about. And his mother asked me if I would show that picture because America needs to understand what's happening to its veterans. It's horrible to look at that, I know. It's very uncomfortable to look at that picture. But that is what happens when you serve your country and you're guilty of nothing more than willing to die for it, you come back here, and he was told he had a mental problem. And the sad part is, his family now has that rash. And they came to the meeting that we did up in Waterloo, Iowa, and his mother held out her hand and said, see, now I've got it. And it's spreading into the family now. So the tragedy is, it's all these experiments all the way along. Is it fluoride, chlorine, vaccinations, flu shots? I would not get a flu shot. I would not get an immunization now because of what I know. Okay, now there's a new flu. Have you seen that, like, in the last 24 hours? The Hong Kong. It's Hong Kong. Would you just love that? And how do they always know yeah. what we're yeah, going to be hit they, by? Yeah, how do they know what but, we're going to be hit by? Yeah, what we're going to be hit by. Don't you love in Hong now? Kong? Okay. Uh, and yeah. CNN, and now they'll tell, they're telling you where are going to be the big <laughs> flu cities in the next six weeks. Yeah, they're telling us. Are they, they? are they smart or what? Yeah. They either have a psychic working for them, or I'm not sure how they can figure that out. What it boils down to, this government is, as far as I'm concerned, it mirrors Rome. You know, the modern Roman emperors who were just slave masters. Bread and games. I, 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 would, I would literally suggest to you. Incredible. We're actually running out of time uh -huh. here. I want to give. Uh, uh, do you have any. Before we get to our closing comments here, do you have any. Okay, we, we, we've. Uh, I think we've established for anybody watching the show that. that uh, that uh, this government is totally irresponsible. But they're not taking care of their veterans. Yeah, they're, well, they're just, they, they have another agenda. That's right. Okay. Uh, do you have any solution for this or any anything that you're fighting for, George? First of all, I want Austin to come together and form an Operation Braveheart. I want to see Operation Braveheart started here in every town across the nation where they take care of their veterans because these guys need help. They're too sick. 
they need support. And if that means we're going to go to the TV stations and, and the mainstream media and, and, and with placards or something, you know, whatever we decide it is a town to do. Every town across the country needs to do something. They need to get involved with these veterans. What's that, Secondly, like a nonprofit type thing? Oh, it won't even be that. It'll be just mm -hmm. loosely grouped people that come together because they care. Operation Braveheart. Braveheart. Right. We want somebody to take responsibility for starting that here in Austin. It can be Gulf War veterans, friends of Gulf War veterans, family of Gulf War veterans, whatever. Then we need to start writing our congressmen some serious letters, like holding their feet to the fire, like Phil Graham said on this committee. Phil Graham has full knowledge that disease is communicable. He has full knowledge that the disease is killing our veterans. His name is in here, and he knows about it. And I want to know when these people are going to be held accountable for their actions. And our own Phil Graham, having been one of the uh, 15 people that sat on that committee, is extremely accountable. Um, I want us to get involved as an American population, as a group, to start looking at evidence behind what we talk about. Get these documents. Uh, some of them aren't available any longer from Congress or from the Senate, but get it. Uh, do your investigation and find out if I'm really telling you the truth. Because if I'm telling you the truth, then we're in more trouble than even just this nice conversation here between the three of us can even portray. We're in more trouble because that means we are intentionally allowing our military to die. And if that is true, if it will happen to our military, you know the saying, they came for the Jews and I wasn't a Jew? Right. They came for the Catholics and I wasn't a Catholic? Well, they're coming for your military right now, one person at a time, and they're taking them. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to be us next. Hello? That's, Joyce? That's, yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, Carla, real quickly, we're running out of okay. time here. This is Babs. I want to know where you get printed literature. To well, just go ahead and get hold of our comment line. That's way yeah. the way to handle that. Three seven. Uh, give them, put up the comment line, and when any any message that comes to Joyce, I and or actually we can put up your your uh, your number. You can contact me, and I can tell you where to find it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Which government documents you need? Go to ahead and read it of. again, real quick. Okay. Joyce. Gulf War. The address. Uh, Gulf War. Thirty five. O six. Highway six south. Number one one seven. Sugar Land, Texas, 774-78-4401, phone number 281-587-5437, website www.gulfwarvets.com, gulfwarvets.com. And I can tell you which documents are available yeah, from the I government. Yeah, I want to know why they had to uh, remove his skin. Actually, we're running out of time here. I'm, I'm sorry. We don't know. We don't know. But, the, but okay, uh, we're, that, that's got to be the last call for tonight. But like we were Go saying, ahead, what the, the thing that people better start to realize, because Saddam is over there trying to bait us again. We're not through with him, and it's almost justice because we created the little fellow, and. <laughs> He's our little child, right? That's right. <laughs> Say it, Joyce. You get we so mad. Him. We, we, we Yeah, we, we, armed, we him. armed him, and now we've earned him. We're going to really have, right. to, have to... This is not something that is going to be... When you start dealing with viruses... It's you deadly. Can, it's deadly. It's biological terrorism, and 25 and other countries have these same biological agents because we sold them... 25 of the and it does, they cannot differentiate these little things that come out and get you. They can't say, let's get the people in uniform. That's they right. get whoever is there. And it may be That's you right. or your child. That's right. And he will, he's going to level bad things on us. He or someone. And we don't know who is, but we know we're being set up for it, though. And they're busy, busy, busy cooking up their little recipes, aren't they? And the sad part is that I do think it is going to happen in this country. I think, oh, I think biological terrorism, unfortunately, is, is imminent. We have given too many countries this. There are some people that believe that up to 50 countries now have this. And we're making an enemy in the Middle East. We're making enemies many places by going in with uh -huh. these UN actions. And I'm afraid we're setting ourselves up as a target. But we, you, this one is a whole new battlefield. Oh, you, the how days do you of bullets are over. over. The bullet wars are it. gone. Yeah. The, right. That would start to look good, probably, compared oh, yeah. to what's going to happen to us if we don't get a handle it's on Pandora's this. It's Pandora's box. We have opened Pandora's box. Truly. And we are going to be the victims of it. I would suggest to you that if, that if some little foreign excursion outfit does it, uh, the big enemy could very well do that. We know that somebody's setting us up for it. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, I want to just give you all, we got two minutes left. Do you want to close any comments? Well, I just hope everybody's going to listen, and I hope that you're going to recognize the fact that, that Josh Riley is truly a hero, and I think a lot of us have, no, you are, you are, and uh, she's uh, a true patriot and a woman, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> well, thank you. Let me say. And good luck to you on your radio show, oh, Good Joy. luck to you, honey. Don't kiss me. You no, might have something I'd catch. <laughs> Not you, but anybody. <laughs> um, I want to say that um, I believe I was healed for this reason. I believe I was healed. This is not anything I've done. This is my mission that I've been given because I will never forget where I've come from. I was sick. I was very, very sick. And I will not forget. I will not ever forget because there are Gulf War veterans out there that are sick right now as we speak. Their wives, their spouses, their children. And I want them to know that we will be there. And America will care as soon as America finds out. And that's why we need every person out there to cir circulate these videos, Keep talking. get this information out, get the documents yourself. Don't believe me. Get the documents yourself. And then we've got to move forward together. Mm -hmm. Joyce Isaacs, God, I appreciate you coming on the Jeff Davis Anytime, show. Anytime, Jeff. I love it. Joyce Riley, God bless you, Thank dear. You. Keep, keep up the good work. Thank you. With that, folks, we're going to wind it down. I appreciate the callers and our guests here tonight. Uh, God bless you, folks, and, and death to the new world order. <laughs> God bless you. Hello, folks. This is Jeff Davis with the legendary Jeff Davis Show from Central Texas, USA. And I love my Canton archives. Peace out, baby. Well, hello, folks. And stay tuned for more classics here on My Canton Archives and our new channel, Waco Archives. And don't forget our oldest channel, Mike Hansen Archives, here on YouTube. Stay tuned for more, but make sure y'all get everybody to subscribe to Hansen Archives and the new one, Waco Archives. We're busy every day uploading more and more videos. Uh, we have hired somebody to do that, and bought the equipment to do it uh, it's a lot of work uh, if you would like to help out with that situation uh, send us $25 and I will send you my book and everything that comes in from my book will be used to uh, fund this these three channels so stay tuned right here uh, to YouTube and Facebook. I am Mike Hansen from Gonzales, Texas on Facebook. Thanks a lot. And God bless. Oh, Monday on six o'clock. Come on, anybody want to come up here? All right, that's it. All right, right. right. who wants to lead? Let Gene go. Go ahead. Ready? Yes, sir. Here's All right. Yell it out. God bless the Republic. Republic. Death, Death to the, the new world! world.